morning? Amen. Amen. Give me a little value. <laughs> Amen. It was good to have Deacon Tibbs back. Amen. Amen. I know you are. Thank the Lord for you. Amen. So let's praise and worship him this morning. Amen, saints. Amen. Let's thank him and praise him. We're going to sing out of your hymn book 164, I've Decided to Follow Jesus. 164. 164, Brother Richard. You got to get your book out. You should know that one, Richard. Yeah, you should. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Uh, 164, sir. Thank you. Follow Jesus. Amen. I have decided. I don't know about you, but I have. Amen. All right. Amen. <laughs> I have decided to follow Jesus.
government officials and everything else going on. It's been a, it's been a trying year. It's been a trying year, not just for Christians, but for everybody. So we just, you know, so we all are in need of prayer. You know, this country is in need of prayer. Our government is in need of prayer. Our leaders are in need of prayer. You and I are in need of prayer. Everyone stands in need of prayer. When you say you don't need prayer, then you better check yourself out again. Because we all, we all need it. We get up in the morning and we ask God to lead our day for us. You know, Holy Spirit to guide us. You know, we need prayer. We need, as soon as you get up in the morning, you know, start your prayer. Thank the Lord first. Start your prayer because Satan's on his job. You know, he's on his job. He's waiting for you. You know, he's smiling, he's smiling at you, just waiting for you to come on out to his world, you know. And, and if we're not prayed up, you know, he can he can get in there. He can work his ways in there. See, all he needs is a toehold, you know, and work his way on in that door. So we need to be prayed up. We need to be guarded up, girded with the truth, you know. So Satan's on it. Believe me, he is on it. And you get out in the world and you see... You think you're doing good? There are hate groups out there for religious groups <laughs> that just hate religious groups. You know, not just the supremacy, all the other stuff, but they hate religious groups. You know, so we need to be prayed up and backing each other up. You know, come to church, get strengthened up, you know, so we can go out into this world and fight. Satan starts and he throws at us constantly. So don't fear this world. We're not really part of it. We're just here passing through. So we but we gotta deal with it while we're here. <laughs> yeah, we gotta deal with it. So Pastor Randall used to say, trust in the Lord. Yeah. Trust God. Trust God. Who else can we trust? We, we can't even trust our own family members. <laughs> so, so we have to trust God. Trust God. Every morning we get up. God, I'm trusting you to, to help me through this day. You know? Lord, I'm helping. I'm, I'm praying that you make a way on my job for me. That person who bothers me every day. So, you know, put that shield around me, Lord. Help me. If the job I'm doing really isn't what I want to do, but work with me, Lord, that I get through this to the next step. My health isn't what it should be. Praise God. Turn it over to Him. You'll be going to make a world of difference. I didn't mean to say all this, I did. Yes, I did. So, as I pray, just think of what, if God wasn't in your life, mm, just think about that. If God wasn't in our lives, where would we be? Totally lost. Tossed here and fro from each wind, doctrine, you know. Just totally lost. I'm gonna wait for Andy Ruth to sit down here because I love Andy Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, just, just think about that. If God wasn't leading us, wow. Amen. Who, you know, Satan would be happy. Yes, Lord. You know, he'd leave us alone then because he'd have total control. He'd have total control. So, when you get up in the morning, you know me. Thank God. Before your feet touch the floor, thank you for another day. May we bow our heads, please. Oh, wise eternal Father, one that sits high and looks low, 
the author and finisher of our lives, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end. Father God, we come to you now to thank you for another day watching over us last night, touching us with a finger of love and starting us out on a brand new day we've never seen come before. You didn't have to do it, Lord, but we thank you. We pray your blessings on those three families. Touch them, O oh Lord. Ease their pain and suffering. And if their loved ones knew you, O oh Lord, they can have a smile on their face because they know they're in a better place. So, Father God, we come to you now just to thank you for this day, watching over us, allowing us to get up, thank and you look Lord. around our house thank and see Lord. that everything was all right. The things we take for granted, we got up and hit the light switch and there was light. We went to the water tap and turned it on and there was water. We opened our refrigerator, there was food. We looked in their closet, there were clothes. Thank you, Lord. We have food to eat. We had clothes on our back. We had shoes on our feet. Father God, there are people that don't have those things in this world today and still don't have water to drink. Have to boil the water, go to the creek and boil the water. Outside toilets, if they have a toilet. No shoes, no socks. The clothes on their back is all they have. And we have an abundance of things in our house. My Lord, my Lord. We have things overflowing yes, that we can't even use anymore. Help us, Holy Spirit, to do the things of what's necessary. You said to get rid of the clutter in our minds so we can concentrate on you. Help us to get rid of the clutter in our, in our home. that we might be a blessing or a help to someone else that don't have those things. Father God, touch us this day, O oh Lord, that we seek you. It's not about a show. This is a dying world, O oh Lord. You bring life to it. And all you ask of us is just to praise you for what that you do, the things that you do for us. You gave your only begotten son. He died on the cross for our sins. When worthy of it, we thank you, O oh Father. We're just, we're no better than filthy rags, but you saw fit to save our souls. And we thank you for that, O oh Lord. You went ahead of us. We have a home waiting for us, O oh Lord. We can go walk streets of gold and have a smile on our face. We won't need our glasses. We won't need crutches. We won't need anything. We'll be in our sanctified bodies. And we thank you, Father, for that hope and, and that we know where we're going to go to. If we've accepted you, we know where we're going to go to. So, Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for our pastor that continues to stand on the rock and preach an uncompromising gospel to us, O oh Father, telling us, thus says the Lord. Continue blessings upon him, O oh Father. Touch his families. Yeah, they're right there with him, O oh Father. They're, they're up and down with him, O oh Father. So touch, touch those around him. Father God, we just pray that something's be said today that touches that man or woman that don't know you in the free parting of their sins and that they might come running and ask them, what must I do to be saved? Tell me about this Jesus you always talk about. I want to know about him. I want to know how he can heal my broken heart, lift up my bow down head, and start me out on a brand new day. I want to know about those things. So Father God, let us be aware of this and not be ashamed of the gospel and share with those that want to know, Lord, that we might go out and touch 
someone this day. Amen. And we'll be mindful to give you all the praise and all the glory. Do only you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Won't you be glad to see him? When I see Jesus, hey,
morning. Good morning. Good morning. I don't have any announcements today. Uh, do we have any visitors? Okay, well, good morning again, and we'll have a presentation by Sister Vanessa. Good morning. Good morning. And 
excited even more that our national president, Dr. Samuel Tolbert, uh, calls myself, texts me, and is offering all of his support. And um, he says, now we're going to put you to work. Uh, but that means uh, we're on the national scene anyway uh, because of our foreign mission. Um, actually, I think we're running four years in a row, five years in a row, leading the state of Indiana in the foreign mission. And uh, we have, we've we actually broken the record. I think Pastor Love had it for three years in a row uh, prior to us. And so we're kind of the uh, leader in that area. And it's a friendly competition, uh, but more so it's helping people in Philippines, Haiti, uh, Jamaica, uh, Africa, Ghana, Africa, all kind of places where they're building hospitals, schools, uh, they're helping to get running water in Haiti where well, they've had hurricanes. All that's left is just a piece of grass that the wind and water has blown down because all the trees and homes are gone. They have no running water. And so when we talk about foreign mission, <clears throat> uh, uh, that's not a nickel and dime offering. When we talk about this, we want to help people in Ghana, Africa, or wherever it is. Matter of fact, yeah. Mount Olive has a church yeah. named after us yeah. in Africa, yeah. the Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church. Right. That this church built. Yeah. And that was about ten thousand dollars that we sent from this church. And so uh, that's helping people be able to worship. Amen. Never shall forget, um, Jocelyn was here then, and um, she was younger, her and Jazz were younger, they were making their little contribution, and um, so she needed some shoes. I said, well, Jocelyn, let's go get some shoes. She said, no, Dad, put that money uh, for the foreign mission in Africa. And she had made a dollar amount commitment. They both did. Jazz paid hers over early, because Jazz got money, nobody knows where she got it. <laughs> So she ain't broke, don't let her fool you. <laughs> but, but it touched Pastor Randall's heart so that he went on and paid the rest of her pledge. He said, he said look, he said, that child got some faith. He said, how much does she owe? I told him, remember? He said, here, put that on her so hers will be paid. paid. And so, uh, uh, we have a church named after us over there. And that doesn't stop there. That's right. Uh, they, they need a hospital like we need a hospital. Mm -hmm. There's coronavirus there like it is here. Yeah. So they need the same kind of thing we're getting here. And that's what foreign mission is about. I don't know what he's going to have me doing, uh, but I do know we're very strong in that. And we actually got on the map and are leading the state of Indiana in that area. And that's because of your kindness and your giving. And, and no, we didn't turn in nickels and dimes. We turned in thousands. And the Lord has blessed this church. And if we're going to keep being blessed, we need to keep giving. Because an open hand, you can give and receive. That's right. But when your hand closed, all you got is what in. And that's it. So keep our hands open so the Lord can allow us to be a conduit uh, that He can run His blessings through. I think B said, the choir said, You are the source of my supply. He's the source. We're just a conduit. So let it just run through. It don't belong to us, no way. Let it run through us that it might bless others. Yeah. And uh, so I'm excited about this opportunity and, and I'll be calling on various ones of you to do various things. At some point this year, we need a van. Yeah, cool. And that van is gone. <laughs> and, uh, they said it is unsafe to drive. Yeah. But we need a van with wheelchair access because we want to take Tommy and Brian with us on some trips. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And let them. Who's going to sit on the left or right? Let them worry about that in the back. Wherever it's going to be on the side, we don't know. But we want them on the van with us. And so a little later on this year, we want to pay for it. We don't want to finance it. We want to pay for it. And just and negotiate. When you have the money in your hand, you can negotiate. When they say $35,000, we say, well, we'll give you twenty eight right now. Sometimes that gets their attention. That we can get what we need uh, because we're going to be traveling. Amen. Amen. So God bless you all again. Thank you. You don't have to be kind. And as my good friend Dr. Bruce Rose says, uh, people don't have to be nice to you. And I appreciate all that you all do for me and my family. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. 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 Appreciate it.
appreciate what all you do for us. Oh, he 
Time to worship in the Lord's giving. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's good to be in the house once again. To be able to get back to what God has given us. Where Brother Carter is standing in for our tithes and offering, our building fund, and our benevolence. So let's get back to those things. And where Brother Rice is standing is for our pastoral support. So let's make sure that we support our pastor. Amen. Amen. And we pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you once again for allowing us to. We ask, Lord, that you just bless this offering, that it may be used for the uplifting of your people. Bless the ones that had to give, and bless the ones that had to be as well. In your Son, Jesus' name, I pray forevermore. Thank God. Amen. 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 And in sin did my mother conceive me. 
Behold, thou desire the truth in the inward parts. And in the hidden parts thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with his and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick. When their wrath was kindled against us, then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who had not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul has escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fire. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Well, our help coming. is in the name of the Lord. Let me say that again. Our help yeah. is in the name yeah. of the Lord yeah. who made heaven and earth. And the Lord is a blessing to the reader and the hearer yeah. and the doer of his word. May we pray. Heavenly Father, it's once more that we come before you just to say thank you, Father, just to show our gratitude for your grace and your mercy. And Father, we just ask that you just continue to guide us as you have. And just, Father, just, just reach out to us and just touch us with your finger of love. Let us know that, that you are still in control and you're guiding our every place. Father, we'd like to ask that you take this offering and use it for the uplifting and glorification of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
obtain mercy and find grace yes, in our time of need. Yes, and, 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 and if you're, you're like me, there is never an opportunity that passes where I don't need mercy or I don't need grace. Because mercy, mercy means God doesn't give me what I do deserve. And there's a lot of things that I've done that I deserve far worse than what God Yeah. 
just ain't thank you. In the midst of our, 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 our circumstances and turmoil and ups and downs, God, you brought us out from, from, from harm's way when we didn't see danger coming our way. You put your shield of protection around us and kept us from being harmed when danger was a mile ahead of us on the road. You caused us to go a different direction to keep us safe from any harm. But Father, we just want to thank you for being there when we couldn't help ourselves. God, you picked us up when we was down. You turned us around when we were going the wrong direction. You helped and healed our body when we were feeling the best. You cleared up our mind in confusion when we couldn't see things straight. God, you were our mother when our mother was nowhere to be found. You were our father when we needed a father to lean on. You were our friend when we were all by ourselves. God, you were our, you were our pillow when we needed somebody to comfort us. Oh, God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you. There's so many things we can thank you for, God, because the Lord knows we ain't done all of this by ourselves. We had you with us every step of the way, and when things got too hard, to walk, oh God, you didn't just walk with us, God, you picked us up, and you carried us, and you helped us to get over the hump, oh God, we thank you for being there, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for all of the, all of the blessings you've given us, many, many of the blessings that we weren't deserving of, God, but we thank you anyhow, because you loved us in spite of ourselves, in spite of our wrongdoings, in spite of our shortcomings, in spite of our errors, in spite of our sinfulness, God, you Thank you. 
Calvary. Surely he died. Surely he died. Yeah.
to allow us to gather together in this solemn and spiritual and sacred assembly. Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord. And once again, come and worship you. Thank you, Lord. In the public place in spirit and in truth. Thank you for these that are here. Thank you for those that are watching through YouTube and Facebook Live. Listening in on the conference call. Lord, pray that the power of the word go forth. And be someone who doesn't know you in the part of this. Pray that we come crying. What must I do to be saved? We just thank you for this assembly. We are designed as believers to be together. Yes, Lord. So yes, we, yes. we pray that the power of the spirit would permeate this place. <laughs> go forth to touch hearts and minds and we'll be so careful to give you praise. Pray now you forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of unrighteousness. Stand in and speak for me. Let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Yes. Sermonic prayer. In Jesus' name Amen. we pray and for his sake. Amen. Amen. share with you out. <laughs> John's just going to mess up me. <laughs> 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 Tell up my mind. <laughs> Though the storm <laughs> keep on raging <laughs> my life <laughs> and sometimes Stay. 
Nero had his own mother, Agrippina, murdered. And he is, to, is known to have set part of the city of Rome on fire. Then he blamed it on Christians, saying that, that their God was a God of a consuming fire. He took his crimes and used the Christians as scapegoats. Uh, it was a time of great trial, a time of immense suffering, days of persecution and unrest. And it's against that background that Peter writes to the church of that day, and to this day as well, to let us know that we're going to have to journey through some difficult times. We're going to have to stand up under severe testing. We're going to have to be able to persevere in times of fiery trials and difficulties. Anybody can be Christians and sing songs when the sun is shining. Yeah. Uh, take much faith to give God the glory when, when all your bills are paid. You have to be real strong to shout hallelujah when everything is well in your life. But oh, when the bottom drops out. When sickness comes. And the doctors have done all they can do. When they leave you in your room with the family. They say, we, we give it in 48 hours. And they turn around and walk out. When, when, when trials and difficulties come, when the coronavirus knocks on your door, yeah. and it comes in without permission and takes possession of your health for a season, when your health fails, when your children break your heart, when persecution comes just because you're trying to do the right thing, yeah. when difficulties, tough times, hard days, and long nights show up on the horizon, yeah. That's the time your faith kicks in yes, to let you know that he is a very present help in a time of trouble. Yes, I must say to you, my Lord, I'm beginning to be somewhat troubled these days because the events that we are in the midst of yes. appear in some cases to be overriding our faith in God. Wow, wow. And yes, we've got to be careful. Yes. yes, we need to take precautions, but let us not forget about God. Amen. The Bible readers remember the psalmist was struggling with some things. He said, my, my steps were almost gone, and my feet had well nigh slipped. When I saw how the wicked were prospering, yeah. the righteous were suffering, yeah. I called on the Lord and went to the left, went to the right, and God seemed distant. Yeah. Looked like I couldn't get even get in touch with him. Yeah. I didn't get an answer until I went to church. Well, yeah. Now, you know, church or the sanctuary doesn't necessarily have to be here in Mount Island. Because if you're a child of God in your own house, That's right. That's right. That's in your own office, That's right. in your own classroom, or wherever you are, ought to be set up as a sanctuary. Yeah. A secret place. Uh, a throne room, if you will. Uh, a place where you can go and call on the Lord to get your perspective. Mm -hmm. This word this morning is for somebody going through tough times. Perhaps for somebody struggling to keep your head above water. Well, well. You're smiling just to keep from crying. You come to church, but there's still aches and pains in your body. You're doing the best you can. You put one foot forward, and then you take two steps back. You're trying, but things don't seem to be working out the way you planned. You thought you'd be in a different place at this season in your life. And it looked like you've been praying and calling on the Lord and teaching Sunday school and reading your Bible and doing your devotion and listening to preaching. You're doing everything right, okay. but you're still suffering. Yeah. Well, I've got some good news for you, okay. but I have some bad news as well. Okay. Let me give you the bad news first. The bad news is you may not get out of it right away, yeah. but the good news is he'll manifest himself. Yeah. He will come through. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just because he's not come through already does not mean he won't come through at all. Yeah. The old song said the Lord will make a way somehow. Somebody said I've been down to my last down. But the Lord stepped in right on time. I've shared this with you and this part of my testimony. I lived that in real time. Uh, mom and myself went to Dumas. The old Dumas. Years ago we paid a bill. A two or three dollar bill. We walked up there for that. And so coming back we stopped by Nefer News Bond the shoe store on the corner there. Yeah. And uh, we was always just window shopping. <laughs> Y'all missed that. <laughs> just looking. So we decided to go inside and look. Yeah. And saw so, some of these red ball jets. Yeah. They were sharp. Yeah. And, and I had holes in my tension. Yeah. And I said, put that, put that down, boy. Yeah. Put that down, we ain't got no money. 
So the, the man comes over and says, can I help you? She said, no, we just love you. He said, son, what, what do you like? And I said, well, these red ball jeans, but we don't have the money. And she said, oh, you know my mom, I told you. She's, she's breaking her teeth and her dentures are kind of slipping on this. Click, click, click. <laughs> I told you, click, 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 to put that down. do you have? She said, all I have is a dime. She gave that man a dime, and he gave me them shoes. Okay. So you, you talk about down, you know what, it, what even my dime? When you're down to your last dime, he'll set me in on time. What even my dime? <laughs> so so I, I, never, I never thought of be where I am now, but look where the Lord has brought all of us. Yeah. From a mighty long way. Yeah. Yeah. Look at verses yeah. 5 and 6. We see where, first of all, humility is required. Yeah, yeah. So likewise, you young people who have no life experience, submit yourselves to the elder. Yeah. You know, we live in a time where people don't care about nothing old. Right. They don't care about nothing that's over 50. Because yeah. everything these days is geared toward youth and excitement and vigor, vim and vitality. You got people like Jay-Z, who calls himself Jehovah, yeah. Which means the God and Savior of rap. That's Beyonce's husband. The Kardashian family, Kim, Chloe, and Courtney, they haven't done anything. They're just famous for being famous, riding off their daddy's coattail. Nicki Minaj, Cardi B, Young Thug, Drake, and Chance the Rapper, just as you know, you pass it up on it, you know? <laughs> by this society, but we don't care anything about anything over 50. The folk with no life experience contribute to conversations through reality TV shows, as if that's the way all of us are supposed to live. But the scripture tells us to guard against that. Because when you don't have any life experience, you ought to listen to somebody who's been somewhere for you. You know, the crowd that had to deal with the colored and white water fountains. Yeah. Uh, going to the back door to be served at restaurants. Yeah. Being made to go to the balcony at the old Tiffany and State Theaters because they wouldn't let us sit on the floor. Uh, and on the balcony, you had chewing gum all over the bottom of your shoes when you left. Being denied to sit at lunch. You, is this Black History Month? This is Black History Month. So I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. So, so Solomon was, was the wisest king who ever lived. Spent an entire book on the book of Proverbs, trying to give wisdom to his young son, Rehoboam. But Rehoboam listened to some people with no life experience who destroyed the kingdom that God set up because uh, when you're unwise, you're headed for destruction. And you'll tear down the legacy that's been built up for you. And in his case, the kingdom suffered a split because of his youthful arrogance and refusal to take counsel from those who are older and wiser than you. When you don't listen to anybody, you're headed toward ruin. Likewise, the young people submit unto the elder. Not only should the young ones submit to the elder among us, but all of you should be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. Mm -hmm. So not only is humility required, but secondly, humility is reasonable. Yeah. Everybody is seeking their own way. But the true child of God would allow God to have preeminence of first place Amen. in their lives. Mm -hmm. See, first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be yeah. added unto you. Now, humility is a difficult garment to put on. Mm -hmm. To be clothed with humility means to tie yourself up in a garment of humility. Mm -hmm. It means to wear the apron of a slave. Mm -hmm. Peter would know this firsthand because the disciples were in the upper room getting ready to observe the supper. And it was the job of the slave, the lowliest in the room, to wash their feet while they reclined at the table. Mm -hmm. They were getting ready to fellowship. It was the job of the lowliest servant to put on an apron. Uh, and wash their feet as they reclined, but nobody moved. And since nobody moved, uh, nobody thought it customary to do feet washing. Jesus arises from the supper, lays aside his garment, puts on the apron of a slave, and washes his disciples' feet. As an example, that, that lets us know that no matter how high you think you are, yeah. don't ever be so high that you can't serve somebody. Yeah. When you become a Christian and surrender your will to Christ, yeah. what you're saying is, Lord, 
I have no will but your will. I have no plans but your plans. I have no desire but your desire. I made myself a slave. And the word slave in this text literally means a bond servant. Which means one who is willingly subject but not in bondage. I'm, I'm free but I choose to be a slave. Now all of us are slaves to something. The question is, whose slave are you? Either you're a slave to sin? Yeah. Or you're a slave to godliness. Yeah. Yes, and when you're a slave to sin, you're in bondage because sin is showing up a cruel master. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And when you're a slave to Christ, you've been set free to come back yeah. and be a slave. Yeah. He set you free, but you love him so much that you willingly come back and make yourself a slave. Yeah. The only folk who can't shout right here are those that, are, that think being in charge means you're in control. Yeah. But being in charge does not mean you're in control. That's right. Because there's only one who's in control. Right. You might be in charge of your Sunday school class or your little group that you have at your house. Yeah. But when you come here, you're required to check your ego at the door. Yeah. You better leave your supposed importance in the back seat of your car. Yeah. For the only one here who deserves to be worshipped and who deserves to be shouted over is God himself. Yeah. That's one of the reasons we say forget about yourself. Yeah. Concentrate on him yeah. and worship him. Right. Leave that ego back there jumping around in the trunk. Yeah. And pick it back up when you leave here. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And brothers and sisters, when you're free, you don't care who's looking at you. Yeah. Somebody else's opinion doesn't bother you. No. When God sets you free, you're so comfortable in your skin, you just have to get you. Yeah. That you don't need my approval. You don't need a man's pat on your back. You don't need some woman. You don't need a job. You don't need to live in a certain kind of house or drive a certain kind of car. You can be free to come back and be a slave. To submit. To surrender means to place yourself under others. To submit means to willingly put yourself under others. But to resist means to shun that lowly estate. And the scripture says that God resists the pride. But he gives grace to the humble. Yeah. To submit means surrender. Yes, but to resist means to keep people and God at arm's length. Because yeah. I'm too big for these people. Yeah. Do you know who I am? Do <laughs> uh, you know how many degrees I have? Mm. Do you know what kind of money I make? Mm. Do you know the important people who know my name? I don't care if you have more degrees than the thermometer. Yeah. Uh, you ought to be humble. Because yeah. God resists the pride. Yeah. He gives grace yeah. to the humble. Yeah. Not only is humility required and humility reasonable, but thirdly, humility is rewarded. Yeah. The text says, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Yeah. And humility is the foremost grace of the Christian life. Mm -hmm. Peter insists that the admonition to be humble be placed uh, first in his list, even through trials. Because crying and complaining will not stop the trial. Mm -hmm. Murmuring and groaning is not going to move his hand off of his purpose for your life. Because we are pilgrims with a purpose. And the purpose that God wants to work out in our lives may include suffering and trials, setbacks and heartbreak. It may mean that you have to stay sick a while. It may mean you've got to go through it a while. You're not going to come through it yet, but at some point you'll come through as God has his mighty hand on you. And that hand on your life is so powerful not to crush you down, but to get the purpose out of you. Yes. His hand is on his child to bring purpose out. Humility must always be seen uh, as under the mighty hand of him who is the enemy of pride and self-centeredness. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The text says in due time, he will exalt you. Yes, that word due time in the Greek is the word kairos, which is different from our word chronological in the English, which is time on the clock. But God does not move by time on the clock. God is above time. As a matter of fact, time really is an interruption to God because God is eternal. So chronological time is that time we can look at on the clock. But kairos means that God will get us out according to his time being, Or at the right or opportune moment. Anybody here been through a trial for a moment? It looked like it would never end. But now you're on the other side of it. You've surrendered yourself to the mighty hand of God. Yeah. That's where one of the arguments for raising your hands in church come from. It means I've surrendered. Yeah. I give up. My good friend, Dr. Ed Copeland from the, the Zion Baptist Church in, Can in uh, Rockford, Illinois, has a sermon. The title of the sermon is, Come In With Your Hands Up. Yeah. A lot of times 
trying to come out, but he said come in with your hands up. As you come in to worship, you come in surrendering with your hands up. Your will is my will. Your ways are my ways. My desires are your desires. Whatever you want me to do, I'll give up. I'll surrender. Take my life and make it whatever you want it to be. And whenever you give up struggling, that's when God will bless you. Jacob was a trickster and a liar. Yes, the scripture said he stole his brother's blessing. Yes, he tricked him out of his birthright and ran away and thought he had gotten away with it. Yes, but 20 years later, yes. word on the street was Esau was coming. Yes. The scripture says all night that night, Jacob wrestled with an angel. Yes. And the angel was really a reincarnate yes. representation of God himself. And they yes. struggled all night. Yes. Because when you don't want to give up what you used to be yes. to become what God is trying to make you, yes. oh, it's going to be a struggle. A lot of us are trying to hold on to too much that in many of our cases, God has absolutely nothing to do with. Yeah. It's hard to give up what you like, to get a hold of what God is trying to get you to love. Yeah. People say, I love my sinful ways, <laughs> but the Lord is trying to get me to another place. Yeah. But to get there is a struggle. Mm -hmm. Now, if you ain't struggling, that's because you ain't trying to get nowhere. <laughs> Those of us who are struggling can help me testify that every time I desire to do good, yeah. evil yeah. is always present. Yeah. The good that I would do, I find myself not doing. The evil that I don't want to do, that's exactly what I want. If you're not struggling, it's because you are resisting. You're trying to be a Christian in your own strength. You're trying to be a Christian in your goodness. And the longer you stay in that state, the more you'll live a defeated life. For those of us who are here struggling, we know we need grace. Sometimes God got to take you all the way down before he can bring you back up. Sometimes you got to take from you what you think you can't get along with him yeah. and let you know that he was there all the time. Sometimes you got to hit rock bottom before you discover that he, in fact, is the rock at the bottom. Sometimes all hell has got to break loose in your life until the only thing you can do is look up and say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. Have you been there? Have your sins weighed you down? But the Lord gave you grace. Have your sins embarrassed you? But God still picked you up and covered you and stood you up on your feet. Don't let people make you ashamed of your past. Your past gives you your testimony. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I wouldn't be able to say, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I found mine, but now I see. And, and here it is, through many dangers, toils, and snares. I've already come. It wasn't North Carolina Theological Seminary. It wasn't North Carolina College of Theology. It wasn't Simmons College or Golden Gate Baptist Theological Seminary. Not my job, not my income, not my friends or family, not my social structure. It was grace. Anybody here know something about the grace of God? Grace to catch you before you fall. Grace to open doors that will close in your face. Grace to stand you up when you've had a difficult trial. Grace to make you come to church on Sunday morning when things aren't going so well in your situation. You got power, but yet you got joy in your soul. You still got some situations that ain't stopped, but you still have God's grace. Verse 7 says, casting all your care upon him because he careth for you. The word care in the text is the word, another word for anxiety. And that word anxiety means to be pulled in all kinds of directions. Mm -hmm. And that's what worry will do. It will pull you in all kinds of directions. Yes, yes. you got all kinds of stuff on your mind. Mm -hmm. Your children are on your mind. Mm -hmm. Your health is on, is on your mind. Mm -hmm. Your house is on your mind. Your age is on your mind. Retirement is on your mind. Mm -hmm. Strength is on your mind. Right. Your brother's on your mind. Right. Your sister's on your mind. Right. Your granddaughter's on your mind. Right. Trials on your mind. Right. How am I going to get this paid? Yeah. How am I going to get that paid? Yeah. How am I going to get this taken care of? Yeah. When is this coronavirus thing going to be over? Yeah. When, are, when am I going to get my breakthrough? Yeah. Maybe this Sunday going to be the Sunday that God turns it around. Yeah. When you come to church on Sunday and God doesn't turn it around, you go home and then you pull it again yeah. in all kinds of directions. Yeah. But here's what I want you to do. Cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. And cast your cares literally means to place your cares or throw them on him. You remember the triumphal entry of Jesus coming to Jerusalem riding on his beast of burden. They took their garments and threw them on the road and Jesus triumphed when he rolled over them. That's what cast means, to put it on Jesus.
Jesus. Yeah. Let him triumph over it. Put them there out there for Jesus and let him ride over them. But here's the shout in the text. Your anxieties are pulling you in all kinds of directions. Because you got every worry that you can imagine. Yeah. You got every care that you can imagine. Well. You can just number how many things you worry about. Yeah. But one thing. Uh, you need to understand that God has just one care. Yeah. With all the cares you have, yeah. God has one care. Yeah. With all the cares you can write down on a piece of paper, yes, one, two, three, yeah. four, yeah. five, yeah. six, yeah. seven, yeah. eight, nine, ten. God has got one care. Yeah. You, you worry about your husband. You worry about your wife. Yeah. You worry about your son. Yeah. You worry about your daughter. Uh -huh. You worry about your grandchild. You worry about your faith. You worry about your job. You worry about bills. You worry about coronavirus. He just got one care. Uh, and that care is you. you. Point to yourself and say, God is looking out for me. God cares for me. How do I know he cares for me? It was one Friday on Calvary's cross. He died in my place. That proves he cares for me. The early Sunday morning rose when our power is at. That proves he cares for me. God cares for you. God cares for you. He will make a way for you. He'll see you through. He will turn it around. Uh, I remember a, a young man said, I, I'm getting a little dizzy. I've had my, I had my medicine. I've had my 81 milligram aspirin. I've taken my blood pressure medication, but I'm still a little dizzy. He said, I, I gotta hold on to things because I feel like I'm about to fall down. And then he spin around. He said, every time I turn around, God is blessing me over and over again. Uh -huh, he will make your pathway brighter. Yes, he will. And uh, Sophia Martin, a school teacher who was on her sick bed, uh, wrote a song, uh, and she said, uh, be not dismayed, for every time God will uh, take care of you, uh, beneath the wing of love abide, God will uh, take care of you, uh, no matter what uh, may be the test, uh, Yes, you 
pray that you forgive us those times where we misrepresent Christianity. And thank you that you forgive us and give us a, not a second chance, but another chance. We're grateful. I pray now that as we leave this place without your presence, that you be with us as we travel to our various destinations. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, as we commune with the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us all together. Shall we say, let us walk in the light.